Hi, I'm Reverend Amy. Welcome to worship. I'm glad that you found us. Today we're meditating on Jeremiah's message to the Israelites in exile. They'd hoped that God would bring them right back to Jerusalem, stat. When that didn't happen and their exile lasted a long, long time, they had to rethink things. They received a message from God through the prophet Jeremiah that told them to settle down, to bloom where they were planted. What does the scripture have to say to us in these days? With our routines, plans, and even dreams disrupted, what does it mean to dig in and live where we are right now? Let's take a deep breath, center ourselves, and worship God together. Sometimes life takes us where we don't expect. Sometimes God takes us where we don't expect. In worship, we gather to get in touch with God's bigger narrative. In worship, we gather to expand our hearts. So let us worship the God of unending surprises. Let us worship the God of love. Creator God, being faithful has never been easy. You asked Noah to build a ship. You asked the Israelites to plant gardens and build homes while in exile. You asked the prophets to speak challenging truths. You asked the disciples to drop their nets and follow you. And you ask us to love bigger than society wants to. 
Being faithful has never been easy, and as a result, we often miss the mark. Forgive us for holding tightly to human-made plans. Forgive us for the times we say no to you so that we can say yes to ourselves. Unravel the grip we have on our agenda so that we can make room for you. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Blessed are the mask wearers who help prevent passing on of illness. Blessed are the mask makers who are blessing us with their craft. Blessed are the ones on the front lines who are doing their part to slow the spread, care for the sick, and provide emergency support. Blessed are the grocery laborers, the sanitation workers, the hospital janitors, essential workers who make our life, our lives possible. Blessed are all who stay home. Blessed are the stressed out, the tired, the anxious, the lonely, for we are alone together. Blessed are you when you lose it because you are a human. You are loved, and God will see through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Mom, it's time. Oh, sorry. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. I'm so glad to see you. We're working on today's Bible story, which comes from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah wasn't a bullfrog. He was a prophet. That means, do you know what that means? No. It means he brought messages from God to the Israelites, who are God's chosen people. In today's message, the Israelites had been taken captive. Do you know what that means? Yeah. They had been rounded up and taken to Babylon, where they had to live far away from their own home. And God's message was about the people who had captured the Israelites. Any guesses what he might have said? He said to pray for those people. Do you think it was easy for them to pray for their captives? Their yeah. cap the people yeah. who had captured them? Yeah. I don't think so either. I think it's really hard to pray for someone you don't love or even like, right? Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to say thanks for sending grandma than it is to say, Oh, thanks for that person who moved me out of my house, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, today, this week and recently we've been talking a lot about people who feel like they've been taken captive away from their homes and their rights because of racism in our country. Do you know what that means? Yeah. Well, there is someone special I want to tell you about who, like um, Jesus, or like God told us to pray for our enemies and pray for the people who captured her, Ruby Bridges taught us to pray for the people who were threatening her. Have you ever heard of Ruby? Yes. Okay. Well, Ruby Bridges, there's a special story we're going to, I'm going to send you to today called The Story of Ruby Bridges, written by Robert Coles. And Ruby was a real person who, at the age of six, had to fight racism. She was a black girl who went to a previously all white school. She was the first person, and she was very, um, she was threatened and afraid. And do you know what she did to help with her her feelings? She prayed. She prayed for who? Uh, the white people. She prayed for the white people who were threatening her. I'm sure, do you think that would have been easy? No. No, but she did it. Well, I want to tell you how you can read the story of Ruby Bridges. You can go to the teacher's library. That's a channel on YouTube and use our link here, which will also be, will be included below. And there's a read aloud um, of the story. You can learn a lot more about Ruby. Ruby also is the focus of an awesome lesson, which we can find on the National Parks Service website at this link. There's a link, um, an awesome lesson called Teaching Empathy, the story of Ruby Bridges. And if you go to this link, you can follow along and it will teach you about, a, it gives you a lot of resources to learn about Ruby and other civil rights leaders. 
finally today, um, there, when Ruby went to school, she led the whole United States in a movement to desegregate schools so that children of all colors could go to school together. And her story was so powerful that um, a famous artist named Norman Rockwell painted a picture about her. And can you tell everyone what it's called, Daniel? It's a problem we all live with. And if you go to this link at mymodernmet.com, you'll see the picture and you'll also see um, an, a very interesting article about the powerful um, picture and its use by the civil rights movement and even when it was installed at the White House by President Obama. I think we should try to follow Ruby's uh, message of praying for those who who are not our friends and who are holding us captive. And let's try that now. Dear God, thank you for sending us people like Ruby Bridges, who gave us an example of faith and love. Thank you for our family and friends who helped us through this difficult time. Thank you for showing us the people who need your love and kindness. Please help us to support our friends and neighbors of all colors. Please allow us to show your love to those people who have been taught to hate. Please show us ways that we can lead people to your love and light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for seeing us today. I'm glad you could be with us, Daniel. Joy to the world, all the boys and girls. Joy to the fishes and the deep blue sea. Joy to you and me. Mom is staring. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> In the 29th chapter of Jeremiah, verses 1 through 7, we read the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jeconiah and the Queen Mother, the court officials, the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the artisans, and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. The letter was sent by the hand of Elasa, son of Shaphan, and Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, whom King Zedekiah of Judah sent to Babylon to King Nebuchadnezzar. The letter said, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today we're embarking on a new worship series developed by Lyle Gwynne Garrity called Unraveled. I must say the title Unraveled really got my attention, and that was before the death of George Floyd. How appropriate is that for the days that we are living in? Our regular routines have all but unraveled in so many ways with the pandemic. And perhaps what we are seeing is the beginning of the unraveling of the legacy of white supremacy in the U.S. I hope that we are seeing not just a moment in our history, but a movement that will continue to grow and mature and bring us to a new, more just place in our society. So we're going to sit with the image of unraveling for 12 weeks looking at a range of stories from the Bible to guide us. Depending on the day and the news and how we're feeling, the word unraveled doesn't seem quite enough. 
it can seem too tame. Perhaps unhinged or fried or upended would be a better series. Would you be curious about a series called Over It? Biblical People Who've Had Enough. I asked a friend how she was feeling this week and she re replied, crispy. I think that's the stage right after fried. Think bacon, crispy bacon. Have you ever felt crispy? Just a little bit of pressure and you would snap in half? And that's usually a more appealing state for bacon than it is for humans. Working from home these days makes worship planning, sermon writing, and filming a family affair. And this week, our little rescue dog, Sadie, got her two cents in on the theme. Sadie thinks chewed up would be a more fitting theme. Tuesday morning, I heard Bill say, Sadie, Sadie, what did you do? This is why we can't have nice things. In Sadie's defense, she doesn't do much. She is such a good girl. She spent the first four years of her life before she came to us as a puppy mill mama. She's had a rough life. Sadie is always by my side, keeping an eye on my activity, my little shadow. She was so stealth and quick, I hadn't even noticed that she had slipped away for a moment. It was a fleeting moment, but just long enough to chew a tassel off our Turkish carpet. There was no tassel in sight. She ate it up with no hope for reattachment. Our rug is forever marked by Sadie's unraveling. What happens when our life falls apart? When our tightly knit plans unravel? How does God fit into all of that? When Jerusalem was occupied by the Babylonians in 598 BCE, the Israelites were deported to Babylon. They were in exile. Jeremiah wasn't their most popular prophet. He had been warning them for decades that bad times were coming because of their neglect of the marginalized, but to no avail. The people didn't listen. And now they found themselves deported, depressed, a long way from home. Jeremiah had an opportunity. He could have filled the people with hope and cheered them on. This was only a temporary situation. They'd be heading home soon. This is only a short-term setback. Life as you know it will be reopening soon. He would have had some company had he gone that route. The false prophets were saying just that, back to normal very soon. Hold on. And they were popular. They had the message everyone wanted to hear. Jeremiah could have jumped in and been the new Moses, leading them home, a sort of reverse exodus, back to Jerusalem, back to the temple where they worshiped God, back to the life they remembered. But that life was gone. The temple was destroyed and looted. Jerusalem was occupied. There was no back to normal to be had. Jeremiah had a very different message to deliver to them. God has brought you into exile. Be in exile. This isn't for a short time. This is for much longer than you would like. Stay put. Build houses, no tents. Build houses, plant gardens, settle down, settle in. Find partners. And your children shall find partners and their children. And so it goes. Be a part of your new community. For the welfare of the community is your welfare. So whatever dreams they had of returning, dashed, gone, unraveled, chewed up, no tassel to be found. This was their new home, their new normal. Have you ever had to start over again? Did that include a new place? Are you from somewhere else? Did your displacement ever become your new home? People are so resilient. This is part of the story of humanity. We are relocated, willingly and against our will, and we survive and even thrive. This is a very resonant text these days. I think of immigrants seeking a better life due to economics or civil unrest, folks relocated by jobs or school, people just needing a new start without their old baggage 
or perhaps those seeking new adventure. I think of slavery and the hundreds of thousands of Africans that were brought against their will to our country, the country of first people Native Americans who were also displaced or killed. Our country, our prosperity was built on the backs of slaves, their descendants, immigrants, refugees. How do Jeremiah's words sound in those circumstances? Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take partners. Multiply there and do not decrease. Seek the welfare of your new city. Pray to God for your neighbors, formerly known as enemies. Is this a vision for everyone? I think of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. Take some time to listen to it or read it again. How timely it still is for us today. Is its continuing timeliness a condemnation of our lack of progress nearly 60 years later? Or is it a call to us in this present time to keep on working, to not lose faith in a dream that in God never dies and will be realized. Perhaps it is both. This vision from God delivered by Jeremiah is still shocking today. Stay put. Slow down. Make the best of it. Live. It seems that nothing moves fast, but nothing moves at all if we don't do the work it needs. We cannot sit down passively and wait for God to set things right with racial, racial injustice in our land and in our world. We cannot just wait out the pandemic willy-nilly without taking precautions and caring for those who suffer from both the disease and its widespread collateral damage. Doing the work that living and prospering requires is facing our problems and challenges head on. Doing the work to dismantle white supremacy. This must include us white folks educating ourselves and putting down our defensiveness about being well-meaning people and instead taking responsibility for the deep harm that the system we benefit from causes people of color. And we need to do the work to face a global pandemic. How can physical and economic wholeness be addressed in perhaps a whole new way? Many have talked about going back to normal and how that just isn't possible anymore. And many have talked about what we considered to be normal and how we don't want to go back to that. In our culture, racism is normal. Misogyny is normal. Transphobia and homophobia is normal. Greed is normal. Fear of difference is normal. The list goes on and on how wonderful it would be to be in exile from those problems, to leave them behind. But they trail after us into exile and set up housekeeping with us. They live with us. They live through us. Remember how Jeremiah says to seek the welfare of the community where the people are living? Welfare is a translation of the Hebrew word shalom, which is a bigger word than just that. It has connotations of wholeness, prosperity, human flourishing. It is Dr. King's dream. It is the dream that we are hearing coming from the streets and in Black Lives Matter's marches. It is the dream of health and wholeness we hear from COVID units and nursing homes. It is a dream of all children having quality education regardless of the color of their skin or their economic situation. It is the dream from Stonewall that remembers that pride was a riot, a movement started by trans people, women of color. Shalom looks reality in the face. Shalom gives up the false sense of security the reality that needs to die so that the dream can come to life, can be life. I think we can imagine a little bit of what it was like for the people to hear Jeremiah say, sorry, no, you're not going back. It's impossible. 
you have to bloom where you're planted. You need to make a life in the here and now. Put away your illusions about return. You aren't going anywhere. And your kids aren't. And not even your grandkids. You're here to stay. What can we do to be where we are now? Are we just waiting for this time to be over so we can go back to normal to get on with really living? It's hard. There is so much wonderful stuff of life that we miss. It's hard to face the reality of our limitations and try to find a way to live, let alone flourish. I know that teachers and parents alike are counting the days to the end of this school year. Working at home gets stressful and hard over time. But I hope that I'll never forget working from our table and having the view of our beehive out the window. The curious chipmunk that pays a daily visit to the hive. The sight of the bees taking off from the hive. And the sight of the bees coming back in for landing weighed down by pollen. I know I'll miss that someday. But right now, what gardens can we plant? What seeds can we nurture and water so that they may flourish? Can we contribute to growth that we may never taste the fruit of? Can we lay stones for a building that we may never see finished? Jeremiah's words carry a beautiful vision from God of people settling down, being planted, being stable together. This flourishing life is born of suffering and loss. It's not pie in the sky. It's a difficult to achieve vision. Former enemies living together. And because they find a way to live together, life flourishes. It's basic. We know it. But oh, do we need the divine reminder. And if we were to continue reading in Jeremiah, we would see where God promises to take the people out of their exile when it is completed. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Friends, God is faithful and steadfast in God's love for us. We do have a future with hope. Can we embrace where we are now? Can we get to work planting, building, living, just being where we are? Let's not put it off for the future. We have a future with hope. For now, let's reach out to each other. Let's pray for each other and build God's kingdom right here and now. Flourishing life, abundant life for all. Our destiny is tied up with each other. Our freedom is dependent on each other. We cannot walk alone. Together, let us build up a future that does not unravel a future with hope. Amen.
God in the spirit revealed in Jesus Christ calls us by grace to be renewed in the image of our creator. Today is the day that God cares for all of creation and wills the healing and wholeness of all life, weeps at the plunder of earth's goodness. God embraces all of humanity and delights in diversity and difference favor solidarity, transforming strangers into friends, and so shall we. God cries with our black siblings in Christ and with the masses of starving people. God despises growing disparity between rich and poor and demands justice for workers in the marketplace, and so do we. Today is the day that God deplores violence in our homes and streets, rebukes the world's warring madness, and humbles the powerful and lifts up the lowly. And so shall we. God calls for nations and people to live in peace and celebrates justice and mercy as they embrace. Today is the day that God brings good news to the poor proclaims release to the captives and gives sight to the blind and sets the oppressed free. And so shall we plant and build a new community that we can be one in divine love for the world. And let us continue in prayer, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. From Romans 15, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go into the new week filled with joy, peace, and hope so that you may plant and build, strengthening and multiplying the shalom of God's kingdom. Go in peace. Amen.
Thanks for joining us this week as we slowly and steadily engage in this new way of life that's emerging before us. May we feel God's faithful, steadfast love that's always with us, warm as the sun that gives us growth, deep as the roots that give us stability. Have a good week. We'll see you here next Sunday. Thank <laughs> you.